Hey friends, in this video I'll be showing you how to create a action tracker within Google Sheets. So every time you change your status to complete, the progress bar on the bottom will automatically update. You've also got a date or a deadline section here which will automatically pop up. And then on the right hand side we've got a summary section which summarizes everything based on your inputs in the table. So let's get straight into it. So we've got a blank sheet open right here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make the background white so it's easier to see our tracker. So select all the cells with this um, button on the left hand side then go on borders then on the color change it to white and then select the grids and that will make everything white. So we've got a blank sheet right here so let's start populating our data. So the first thing I'm going to copy and paste is the titles. So again you can completely customize these based on your needs. We've got item task deadline and status. Now for item just put one to five i'm just going to paste it to save some time again in task this will very much vary based on your needs and requirements but i've just put some demo tasks in here now for deadline we want this to be a calendar view so here is something you need to do so you need to select the cell go on data then go on data validation then add rule and then from this criteria we want it to be a date so scroll down to is valid date and then press OK. Now, if you double click on the cell, you'll be able to select a date from the calendar view. So let's just select today's date, which is the 5th of January, then scroll it down, and then all of these will also automatically update. And then just make this into a grid and a table view, and then you can center align it as well. So we will have that from here and center align. Now it's time for the status. So here is where we want three conditions complete, in progress and outstanding. And the way we do that is similar to deadline is select the cell, go on data, data validation and add rule. Now this time round, we want it to be a drop down. So as you can see the criteria drop down and we've got a couple of options. So option one is complete. So we'll just type in the word complete. And in terms of color, I want that to be a green. Then the second one will be in progress change that to yellow or amber then add another item and call this outstanding or you can call it whatever you like and then make that red then press done then simply drag that down all the way to the bottom there then as you can see this will allow you to populate different slides let's expand that a little bit so you can see clearly there we go they're all working correctly and again just select all of them and put in the lines or the grids and then again you can center align it by pressing this button right here center alignment so it's nice and clear now what we can do is add week one at the top of the table so the way to do that is just type in week one then select all the cells so b to e then press merge cells this button at the top and then that will bring it all together and then center alignment make it a little bit bigger if you like and then bold it and then you have week one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little bit of color so it looks a bit better. So select the cell, then on this color icon, let's change it to a blue, and then change the text to a white, so it's a bit clearer to see. Now what we're gonna do is add a summary section. So first of all, let's bring column A a little bit smaller, so it's just a bit more visually appealing, and then make F a little bit smaller as well. Now we wanna add a summary tab. So I'm gonna type in summary, and again, I'm going to merge these two cells as such. Now what you can do is you can actually select week one, press this format to paint or paint format, and then select summary. And that will replicate the formatting we've done before. So that saves you a little bit of time. Now, the first thing I want to show is the number of times we've completed a action. So I'm going to type in complete, and then we need to enter a formula here. So the formula will be equals count if open bracket then select your range which will be all these drop downs then comma then you want to put the speech mark and then type in the word complete and then speech mark again and then close the bracket and then press enter what this is doing this is counting the number of times we've selected the complete from the drop down so if I change this to complete again as you can see we've got three here we've also got three here and I'll do the same again for in progress and outstanding. So as you can see, I have gone ahead and completed the in progress and outstanding. And I've also given it some color, just to make it a little bit easier to see. 
And the other thing I want to add now is a total task section. So I'm going to type in total tasks. And then I want to understand how many tasks do we have? And the formula we need for that is a count a function. So just type in equals count a open bracket and then select your range and then close the bracket and press enter. So now Google Sheets is calculating the number of items we have. And notice that I've used the count a function rather than the sum function. If you use a sum function, that will simply add everything up, which is something you don't want. So be very careful here and make sure you use a count a formula. Now the next field is very important for our progress bar chart. So what you wanna include here is a completion rate. So I'm gonna type in completion rate, and I want to see in a percentage view the amount of times we've completed our tasks. So the way we do that is simply by pressing equals the completed field. So there'll be three in this instance divided by the total tasks and then press enter. Now it's coming up as 0.6. So let's chain that to a percentage formatting. And then let's get rid of the decimals because we just want a whole value. Then go ahead and just format it. So I'm just going to make it bold. I'm going to bring it to the middle. And again, I'm going to add the borders as well. Now it's time for the progress bar chart. So the first thing you want to do is select all the cells from B to E, then press merge cells and then give it a different color. Let's go with gray and then make it a little bit bigger so it's easy to see. Now this will become the baseline of your bar. And now we need to enter a very specific formula and the formula is a sparkline formula, which is actually quite long. So I'm going to put that in the description below, but this is how it looks. So I'm going to copy and paste it here. So formula, control C, control V and then press enter. So as you can see, if I just hover over here, what this formula is doing, it's giving a value here of 10% and then the total value is 100%. Hence, as you can see, the bar is representing a 10% value. But actually, we want the bar to represent whatever value is in this particular cell, which is the completion rate. So I'm going to change this 10%. So I'm going to rub that off and then select this cell right here, which is H8 and then press enter. And that will give me a bar which represents 60%. Now, if I change this, let's say, to everything's complete, the whole bar will be complete as well, 100%, because that is now dynamically linked to our cell right here. So let's just change that back to in progress, in progress, that's 80%. Another thing you can do about this bar is, as you can see, at the moment, the color is green, but you can literally change that color to whatever else. If I change that to blue, that will change it to a blue color but I quite like green, so I'm gonna change that back. You can also add in hex um, color codes as well, and that will work as well. But let's stick to green for now. As you can see, that bar will represent 60. And the final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 60% value here as well, which is dynamic. So type in equals and then select this cell and press enter. And then let's just make it um, a bit more aligned. So let's bring this to the center and then bold it as well. So now every time you change these values, then this will automatically update as well. Just an easier way to view the bar chart. And then make any final tweaks, for example, reducing the sizes, or increasing it here. And there you have it, your simple action tracker. And you can replicate this for all the weeks in the year, or you can also do as per a monthly view.